Oh my God, we're here. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Warmaster 101 here bringing you something completely different. We're doing an, a, a, a reveal. If you were watching the earlier live stream today, you may have noticed this little uh, inconspicuous package looming in the background. This inconspicuous package that many people may have guessed. Some people thought it was a flat back puppy. Other people were thinking... It was a giant sardine. But I promise you now, or it may have been even been a shiner. But either way, we're going to have a look. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this. Because, you know, I've been hitting that, you know, slightly cylindrical. You know, not exactly on the fucking small side. Look, but it's definitely, definitely going to be revealed right now. And this is what it is. How fucking big is this tube? <laughs> As you can see, there's nothing else on the inside. All the way down there to that little white, little glimmery thing at the bottom. I don't know what the hell that is, actually. It might be a flipping... It might be a little bit of something at the bottom there, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, this is the Fishing Planet. As you can see by the old logo there. Namu Rod. This particular one is a two section piece made out of cot. <laughs> now I'm going to have some fun with this. Carbon mono Q. Carbon mono Q. Okay, well, whatever the fuck that is. But anyway, it's basically carbon fiber. The bag itself, we've got a felt. And Velcro seal. Very, very nice. I like that. It's got two sections in here. Each with their own individual little pocket. There's the front one. There's the back one. In the back one. Is the, is the, like, the focus point really. This is the, the part I'm going to be focusing on. For the moment, we've got to keep the other section over there for the moment. But yeah, this is absolutely beautiful. Let's talk about the features of this little baby here. So, for starters, definite spinning rod material. The reason you know that this is a spinning rod material for lure fishing, the size of the tipping butt on the end of this thing. Anything that is going to be used for float or otherwise would be. A couple of sections longer like up to about there so it actually fits along the entire width of the arm this thing on me comes to about there which is about four three four inches worth of gap also give a massive giveaway point the eye on this thing is it is among the bigger of the eyes this will allow Bray to pass cleanly through there without lacerating the inside of the eye. Now that is a very, very nice response. The reason that the back one is the lo uh, larger in comparison to the one at the very tip of the rod is very simple. When you've got a reel on here, it's going to flick line off like nuts. And it'll go, uh, as it's coming up, it's going through that eye. And it's actually going to rattle around on the inside of that eye, creating damage. But now... With the larger that eye, the happier the, uh, the rod will actually be. Because the smaller that rod is, the more lacerations on the inside of the eye. Now then. We have a perfect reel seat just there. A little dark area there. I've got the reel here, so I can show you when she's fully put together. Very nice, easy reel uh, adjustment, which is completely detachable. So that you can get in and do maintenance along this line here. Say if you uh, got some crap in there or something like that, you can easily take it off. When you put it back together, just make sure you line up the black uh, the black end on this up with that and rotate it so she actually stays on there. It's very very nice. Now the name of the rod is inscribed. On the rotation 
for the lock uh, for the real lock there. You also got a name on the butt and fishing planet is right there. Look at that. It's bloody lovely, guys. We've got the forward section of the grip with a nice handy finger stub there, so you haven't got that awkward feeling of having a uh, rip, well, having a rod there with a rounded butt. Because if you put, turn it sideways and you start doing that, you're going to start hurting your finger after like two, three thousand casts. You're gonna, your finger's going to get tired. So they've got a nice little indentation there to make it nice, comfortable grip. I love it. It's great. That's the bottom part of the ri uh, the rod. I was about to say the real end. The fucking real was the rod. Let's go and get the smaller section. Now the smaller section is nice. It really is. Look at that. Very, very thin. Now we're going to do a bit of stress testing on this as well. So there's the joining eye, which sits above that uh, at the end there and the gap is about eight inch gap in between eyes going up tearing off at about four inch gap at the top there allowing for very fine action movement on the rod uh, on the rod tip very nice the bend on this rod is very very stiff and i like that because it allows for a longer cast that means you're going to get a nice flick off that t uh, of that tip as it goes on now when you're putting a rod together as a generalized tip, you always want to put on there, lining up the eyes, like so. Don't force it in there, just so it grips nicely. And there's the rod in total. Something else I like about this is that they've actually got, and this is becoming more prevalent as uh, time goes on, that little hook there which is on the right hand side allows you to actually hook your lures on there for easy travel which is really really nice really, really helpful and it is very very nicely made the balance of the rod prior to taking uh putting a reel on there six about six in uh, between four or five inches let's move her up a little bit more about there now the rod is completely made up right now and the balance point is there. You don't want the balance point anywhere near the reel. You want the balance point sitting north of the reel so that when it comes down time to actually do a distance cast of any kind, all the weight is in your hand and not on the rod itself. That is a very, very well made rod right there. If you want to see writing on top there, gives you the name and it also gives you the part number in this case this is the 662ml so you want to have a look for that on the website link if mum will walk and put that up that would be great my overall opinion of this rod is that it is extremely well made I mean really really well made I love it this is great Put the reel on for you guys. As you can see, the reel seat goes in nicely. I haven't loaded up the reel. I've been looking at reel as well, which is nice. As well. And there we go. Now, perfectly balanced. You see how I'm just holding two fingers here. I've got nothing at that end supporting the rod. Just two fingers supporting it. And right now, the main heaviest part about this entire rod reel setup is the reel. The reel itself is going to be sat in my hand quite nicely. And just flicking the tip of that rod. If I do it on camera. I can do quite a reliable cast. Depending on the weight of the lure that I'm using. And I'll probably get about 40, 50 foot distance on a, uh, on a regular cast. If I really wanted to go and put some weight behind it resting my hand on the back part of the button just swinging it around as far as fast as I can I'm not going to do it in here because I'll smash the rod up but you'll definitely get about 150 to 200 feet out of that at a maximum like get the fuck out of my face kind of uh, cast but for uh, this is perfect for river and canal fishing from what from what I can feel 
The spinning rod itself, the spinning rods in comparison to casting rods, are meant for power over distance in comparison to distance over power. What I mean by that is, is that this thing goes out to a distance with medium power, where a casting rod, or the rod that you actually see the real people be, uh, being used with the thumb on top, this thing will actually uh, get you out further than what their rods will get you, but you will have less power at close range. <coughs> the weight on this rod is geared up and is actually says underneath right there. And I'll let you have a look. Don't know if you can see that properly with the light on. But there is gearage loaded up underneath, which is very, very handy, especially if you've got a selection of rods and you want to know what gearage is going to be good for this or good for that. This one, line weight, max 12 to 12, uh, sorry, 5 to 12 pound line with a lure weight of 1 eighth and 7 eighths of an ounce. With, uh, and this is a two piece rod. This is exactly the sort of thing that you would want to get if you're going to go out and you're going to go enjoy yourself on a large strip of uh, water and you're fishing from a boat or you are going to be going along like a river or a canal and you can still hit the far section and you don't have to take all the equipment uh, like the biggest poles or anything like that this thing will get you that distance out there and with the grammage and weight attached to it you'll definitely be able to pump this out to some distance with it but always remember to follow the rules of the rod not the rules of your mind the reason being is that i'm saying that is because whenever you put a too heavier uh either line on here or real uh not so much real but uh a heavier line or too heavier uh lure on here you are going to damage something like this and as uh zombie just said this thing is very expensive and is not one of those, this is not a cheap beginner's reel. If you want a cheap, uh, a cheap beginner's reel, cheap beginner's reel rod setup. If you want a cheap beginner's reel, reel and rod setup, go and see your local uh, tackle store. This is quality stuff here. You know, this is like the next level sort of thing. This is the sort of thing I enjoy doing. I will be loading this up. I've decided earlier today I'm going to be getting myself some 15 pound test line. Even though that this is uh, geared up to, yeah, 12 pound. I'm going to get some 15 on here as a back break and then load up the last like 80 or 90 feet of it with uh actually no the spool itself is quite shallow so i could probably get away with putting all 12 pound braid on here so yeah that would do that would do us good so there is the rod and reel setup as you can see all fishing planet equipment i'm still wearing the fishing planet hat as well by the way it's still it's fucking lovely uh dear. the way it feels in my hand feels nice and it feels nice and light the tip doesn't want to give me anything which is good i don't want to uh, when i'm lure fishing i don't want too much bend in that tip reason being is because i want that to be true all the way through all the way from cast to finish the only time i want that tip to bend around is when i'm dealing with a heavy rod uh oh, fuck. a heavy fish and that's when the tip comes in and starts bending. And I want all that fight, all that bend in that in the tip of that rod. But you need to go whoop. So yeah. Uh, aside from that, uh, well, you need to be a bit closer to the mic. I don't think so because the microphone's right here. You can literally just see the tip of it. But anyway, there's the rod and reel setup. The reel itself sits nicely on on that. There's a bit of a minor gap there, but I'm not worried about it. That that is perfectly abutted, so I'm happy with that. Feels not feels natural. It really does. I love this. This is a really really high quality piece of merchandise right here, and I personally recommend it if you're going to do it. Well, I can always just quit and not bother, but, you know. Anyway. The bag itself, like I said, comes in two sections. This feels with, uh, what is it? It's got like 
Not so much a felt, but I can hear you. Fuck shuffle. Ugh, dear. Uh, you know when you go and get those canvas bags? You know, uh, one of those, uh, like, you can get them on the inside of trousers as well, and, like, in pocket liners and stuff like that, which has got, like, fishnet kind of feel, and you can literally see through it. Like, I promise you, I can see you, but can you see me? No, if I put my thumb through there, you can just about make it out on the camera. That's really, really nice, simply because it cuts down the material, and also, also allows... If your rod gets wet at any point, it allows it to, dry, uh, to drain out and dry easier. So, really, really nice design on the bag as well. That's all I've got, got time for right now, guys. I'm going to go, and because uh, I promise I will be uploading this to my YouTube channel as well. I will be back in about 15 minutes. I will see you all there.